former Springbok player and well, a third of so called all room dividers turned to. Is that correct? Room dividers. <laughs> Not because you're big, no? <laughs> I don't know. You know, you must ask Robert Marawa you you know, make... and, and his listeners. I, I, I just heard of the name on the show. So, uh, you know, we hopped on the bus and we went with the bus of the room dividers. Let's start right there. Room dividers yeah. have been speaking about it throughout the, the season, even whilst the Springboks were at the Rugby World Cup. Not because we lost, but it's been there, back, you know, behind the scenes. Hanekome has finally gone, I don't want to say happiness, but mm. it's something that you saw coming. Look, I think firstly it's a dark cor corridor, uh, if one were to put it. Uh, it's good news uh, for many uh, rugby pundits. I mean, we've had uh, former players them themselves. I mean, there was even a campaign from the vein and classes of this, mm. the former Springbok Bok coach. So I think, uh, I mean, captain then, I think what, it, what, what, this, what this decision that has been taken by Henneker, it means that uh, he's uh, giving now the bait to whoever is going to come on board because what it tells us is he's given up the fight. I think, uh, you know, it also says that, uh, you know, action speaks louder than words. And unfortunately, you know, he spoke more than yeah. actually having the, the action done uh, as a coach and also trying to uh, take this country forward. Mm. It's all it needs. I think the country needs someone who's going to take it forward, who's going to be sort of have the knowledge of the game, but also have within them, take yeah. the risk of, you know, trying to get things going. You know, mm. it doesn't matter you know, whether by hook or crook, but getting something going, going forward. One could argue that Hanukkah Mayer's record isn't that bad. 67% win rate. So, you know, one could say, is it what is really the results? What is he want? Well, that's the question again. So, I mean, it's like you're playing all the smaller teams and you're winning. But when it matters most, you don't win anything. But then you run back to the percentages. I think when you're a Springbok coach, uh, the percentages is a personal achievement. Yeah. All right? As a country, we're trying to see silverware. I mean, if one look at uh, our, op uh, you know, our, our, our opponents, and that's New Zealand and mainly Australia, they pride themselves on winning either the Bloody Slope, winning the Tri-Nations, or the Rugby Championship, Mandela and Cup it's known, the Nelson Mandela Cup itself. And what has he done? I mean, he's won one game against New Zealand out of eight encounters. And we're so lucky to win even that game. You know, had it not been for one of the producers who were doing the TV production, we could have lost that game again. <laughs> so what I'm saying is, I think it's good which was said by Craig Murray, we've lost against Argentina. Mm -hmm. I think then the wheels or the wheel nuts were already loose and were coming off in, in, in quick succession. But then what saved him was then the return leg in Salta where he won. And I think we sort of gave him the benefit of the doubt. But I think after the Japan game, there was no more benefit of the doubts. I think it was just yeah. going to the gallows and, uh, you know, and, and that was it. I think for him to do it now, uh, many people uh, applaud him. Uh, and also just uh, give him the, the, the hands-on and saying, look, it's a good call, but it should have been done at O.R. Tambo when he arrived in the country. The question is, did he fall on his sword or in a way was he pushed out by the pressure from South Africa, so yeah. to speak? Look, I think, uh, you know, he, uh, as I said earlier, action speaks louder than words. Um, he's his own enemy. Uh, he was his own enemy. I'm going to use that uh, yeah. past tense, I think. But also, I think uh, for a man who kept on apologizing, to the nation, but not actually yeah. correcting those mistakes. It means that it was someone that was just, you know, in, in, in blunt force in front of us was just saying, I'm working on yeah. it. But once everything has sort of come down, he would sort of go back to his, uh, you know, his normal position of where he wants. And also, I think what, what is killing this country is the realization of where Saru intends to be in a number of years. That's where, that's where I want us to go through. Now, I'm going to ask the director if we can, if we can start uh, racking up some of those uh, tweets because, again, we did ask our viewers to, to have their say. As we, we get that set up, here's a question. Yeah. We look forward now. Heineck is gone. Yeah. Um, there's no point in beating a, you know, a dead horse or your guys' failure, so to speak. Where to from here, as far as South African rugby is concerned? Immediately, try and uh, have contact with Alistair Kutsi at the Kobe Steelers in mm -hmm. Japan and uh, try and get him here in South Africa as quickly as possible. Because what is important is the Super 18 will start uh, towards the end of February. Yeah. You want him already to have met with all the coaches. Uh, I'm not saying if, if uh, he is going to be appointed, mm -hmm. because I don't think South Africa, uh, with, with, with the back, uh, you know, the, the, the back room uh, sort of uh, dirt that we have, we'd want to bring someone from, you know, yeah. overseas, an international player. It will cause a lot of problems yeah. within the setup, and people will be sort of confused, because I think he understands. He's just been here a couple of months mm -hmm. ago. He was uh, still with the Stormers. Yeah. So I think his, his mind is still fresh. He misses his home. 
you know, uh, his family, which are in Cape Town. And, and, but uh, again, it's always been the man who should have taken the job, so to speak. It's always been there because of the success he brought the Stormers, if I can put that to I mean, you look uh, before Peter de Villiers. He was uh, up and running for, to, to coach a Springboks. He lost out to Peter de Villiers. Yeah. Again, he lost out again to, to Henneke yeah. Meyer. So I think, uh, you know, good fortune favors the brave. And uh, Alistair could see, I'm sure he would adhere to the call. He's the last captain uh, mm -hmm. to captain then. The Saru team, which was before uh, Unity Talks and mm -hmm. also the amalgamation yeah. into one mother body. And also he's the first coach of color to actually, uh, you know, coach a provincial side. And Franchise going up Super Rugby, Super Rugby he's coach SA Under 23, of which I was a part of that yeah. team. So he's got all the credential. I think he ticks all the boxes. He's also able to, commute, uh, to communicate in three major languages of this country, and that is Nguni, Afrikaans. Cross, I mean Afrikaans and English. English. So what more do you want? This is a guy that has got 45 years you know, within yeah. himself, as much as he's oh, just over 50, Let but most of his life has been about rugby. Let me put another name in there. Yeah. Alistair, fine. What about Akers? Johan still Akers young. Is, still young, yes. Still young. Uh, Maybe he's, he's still very young. Yeah. If you compare Alistair with Johan Ackerman, you're making a big problem. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're making a really uh, wrong inference. If you no, try if, and if compare. you have them to the, together. You can together. have them together. I think that's where Akers also came when yeah. it was still John Mitchell. He was still assistant. So he's still learning. Not to say he won't be in the future, but also what's important is get Alistair there and also let's hear who he wants to have. Yeah. Don't force him to have a Johan Ackerman. Don't force him to have a Brandon Fenton. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let him make the right calls because I think what's important is the coaches, uh, you know, when the, you know, the tough gets going, yeah. they, they tend to blame. I mean, I'm remembering a Dick Muir, Gary Gold, mm. just a year before the 2011 World Cup. He didn't want, uh, I mean, Peter De Villiers didn't want those two as his assistant coach. Yeah. They had to have a meeting. So what it means is you, if he's got his own people, he's yeah. got to go with them. Akas for me will be a good choice. Yeah. He's a young man. He's still learning the trade in terms of uh, being a professional coach mm -hmm. as well. He's only his second year. He's going to his third year. Yeah. It would be nice also well, done to have him. him there, but also keep him with the Lions. So don't say he must leave the Lions. Let him coach Super 18 yeah. and then join up with the Springboks. Let's quickly take some, some of the tweets that we did ask our viewers to send through at home. Let's put them on the wall so they can have a quick see. The first one I think is from South African <laughs> Rugby. Uh, well, SA Rugby itself says, Oregon Hoskins says, Heineke gave his all to, to, for the Springboks. It was a great pleasure to work with such a passionate South African uh, as he goes. Minister of Sports, Figel Mbalula, the Honourable One says, Hanek May is an honorable man. He put the interest of the country first. Uh, the next one says, I don't decide nor interfere with the hiring and firing of coaches. And one more, he says, I've signed an agreement with Saru on transformation of the sport. Let's pick it up right there. The issue of transformation of the yeah. sport, many would say this is partly some, one of the reasons why Hanek left. What does Saru do now? Because whatever happens, do they say, give a mandate to the next coach and say, look, it's done and dusted. The coach is gone. We insist on this first and foremost before you even start about choosing players. Tabi said the mandate has been there for years. I don't understand where, where it comes from, mm. this transformation. There's always been a transformation charter, uh, which was headed by the then Songhe Zonayo. Mm -hmm. That's about over 15 years, 16 years. So for me, transformation, it's, it's just a matter of people trying to put the blame on transformation. Yeah. I think as a country, a democratic country, so if one were to ask, what's the reason then did we have unity talks? Did they have unity talks just for one group of people to sort of, uh, you know, uh, get the, the riches of the sport? Certainly mm -hmm. not. So I think transformation, the strategic uh, transformation plan, it's a good plan. Yeah. Is it going to work? We don't know. It's still got to be sort of finalized. We have to look at the coaches for the Super Rugby and you look at the coaching staff. Are you going to have also their numbers that yeah. have got to sort of come to a level, uh, sort of to level the playing fields? I don't know. But also what's important is when the coach is there, he knows how to get players of color to perform. And the thing is, those players are there. It's been proven. We can and we can't to speak to here. The players are there. And I mean, this is a guy that has given so many of these guys we talk about today the opportunity. Had he not been there, would we have seen a Cheslin Colby? Would we have seen a Sia Colisi, despite him being off form, mm. keep on playing week after week, gaining the confidence, eventually playing in the Rugby World Cup? And that was due to Alistair Kutsi. Yeah. Just keeping him in the field of play, knowing that he'll get confidence. That's what he has. Nizam Ka. I mean, this is a guy, you know, Tabis, that he was able to take white and colored people, the players, that is, yeah. to 
where Sia can take them to the location in mm. Gooks and also vice versa. The, uh, the white and the African going to Nizamka yeah. to also go and see what the Muslims do in terms of church-wise. And that is someone who's able then to amalgamate yeah. all races. What more do you want? Yeah, Tando Malan, unfortunately, we're going to run out of time. We're going to have to, well, definitely room dividers. I would need all three of you, but this set is too small. <laughs> Probably have to take the big set. <laughs> hey, we've got to, we've got to do a new, we've got a new, uh, uh, you know, a studio. So yeah, the that's what definitely taking you. Yeah, you've got to take us there. Yeah. <laughs> Tando Malan, a former Springbok player, speaking to us about Heineke Mayer leaving his job and as far as being head coach of the Spring Marks, we're surely going to hear much, much more of this as the time goes on. Time to thank you for speaking to us. It's been a pleasure. But before you go.